defender as many times as you want, but in the best opportunities to be successful. He's the key guy on the offense. Give him a chance to do well. Down on the field where it's very warm, here's Michelle Tafoya. All right, Sean. Well, Alabama defensive coordinator Ellis Johnson told me he has two objectives for his players this week. First, don't just pressure Doug Johnson. Bring him down. Florida has allowed just three sacks all season. Alabama averages four a game. Number two, make interceptions. Of 158 pass attempts against them this year, 22 have been broken up. Just two interceptions by Alabama. So in a drill usually reserved for wide receivers, every Alabama defensive back had to catch 100 footballs from a judge machine every day this week in practice. Too many dropped opportunities last week, Sean. Thank you, Michelle, and stay cool down there today. It's 89 degrees, a little bit on the humid side. There is a breeze to try to cool things off, and the forecast is for partly cloudy skies, and that's what we have overhead at the moment. Alabama won the toss and deferred, so Florida will receive the opening kickoff with Bo Carroll, one of the speediest men in the country, back deep. He's an eight-time track All-American on the Florida track and field team, and Lane Bearden will kick off. The freshman who's done a good job driving kickoffs deep this season. Underway, a high, relatively short kick coming down to Bo Carroll at the seven. Right up the hash marks and down at the 25 yard line. Roberto McBride on the kickoff coverage from Mike DuBose made the tackle. Here comes Doug Johnson, the senior, playing for his hometown university. He's from Gainesville, Florida. And is off to a fine start this season. Some say he's now on the fringe of the Heisman Trophy race. Leading a much more balanced attack this season with the ability to run the ball, although Florida is playing today without its leading rusher, Ernest Graham, the freshman out with a thigh group. They're also without their best receiver again, Travis Taylor, with an ankle injury. That ball thrown into traffic and incomplete. Just what Michelle Tafoya was talking about. They had missed opportunity after missed opportunity last week with interceptions, and Miguel Merritt was bemoaning his inability to come up with that one. The offensive starters for Florida around Johnson. Rob Roberts is a blocker for Robert Gillespie. And up front, the veteran group that Todd spoke so highly of. Many here in Gainesville believe this is the best offensive line in Steve Spurrier's 10 years here. Second and 10. Gators from their own 25. On the draw, it's Gillespie. Powering his way for nine yards out to the 34-yard line where Herschel Bolden made the tackle. Now Alabama defensively, the strength of the unit is up front. Kenny King is a true freshman who's made an immediate impact. The linebackers are Marvin Constant with Miguel Merritt and another true freshman, Salim Rashid. And in the secondary, Marcus Spencer is going to try to play with an oblique muscle strain that forced him out of last week's game against Arkansas. Kirk Wells, the tight end, shifted in closer to the line. And the run is stopped. Salim Rashid, whom the Alabama coaches say will be regarded as one of the all-time greats in Bama history when he leaves, made the first big play of the afternoon for the Crimson Tide defense. One of the big keys of the game today, can Alabama's defensive line create penetration and dominate on the line of scrimmage? That time they got penetration. It freed up Rashid to come in and make the play, and a huge third down play for the Crimson Tide. Alan Ryan with a short nose-up spiral. It took a bad bounce for Florida. Then it's down to the 41-yard line, just a 26-yard punt. The offense for Coach DuBose, Sean Alexander with McClintock, essentially a blocking fullback. Jason McCadley and Freddie Millens, each over 100 yards receiving last week. And like Florida, Alabama has a veteran offensive line with the exception of the true freshman Dante Ellington of right tackle. Chris Samuels might be the best offensive tackle in the country. They expect he'll be a high first-round NFL draft choice, and that unit has more than 7,000 career snaps combined. Andrew Zao, the Florida native, is the Alabama quarterback. They spread the field with four wide receivers, and they hand it off. To Alexander, Andre Davis made the tackle. The middle linebacker, sophomore from Live Oak, Florida. 
The rest of the defense, Gurley and Warren, great run stoppers at tackle and the outside presence of Brown, always a going concern for the offense. Eugene McCaslin, the converted running back with Davis and Keith Kelsey, a first-time starter as a fifth-year senior. All sophomores starting in the secondary. Marquand Manuel is the leading tackler on the defense. He had 15 stops in their victory at Kentucky last week. And that defense held Hal Mummy's unit to 10 points, lowest in Mummy's three years as Wildcat coach. A short pass yields nothing. Perhaps a half yard. Freddie Millen's tackled by Andre Davis. That's a play that created a lot of problems for Arkansas last week. And you, we mentioned Alex Brown. When you make plays, you're going to get attention. Freddie Millen's is the same way. He made a lot of plays last week. So Florida is going to pay extra attention to him. That was a zone defense, a good defense designed to stop that receiver screen. Third down and 16 upcoming. Alabama 38% third down conversions this season. No score, just underway. On a warm afternoon in North Central Florida, out of the shotgun. Sow goes very deep and too long for Freddie Millens. Darrell Dixon, a true freshman, had the primary coverage. Two outstanding players in this ball game. Again, Alex Brown is a much smaller player, but quicker than Chris Samuels. But Samuels has great feet for a big guy. He's very athletic. That's why, again, I expect to see Brown on Ellington when they want to rush the quarterback with him rather than Samuels. Daryl Jackson back for the punt from Patrick Morgan, the senior from Birmingham, averaging 42 yards per punt. That's returnable for Jackson from the 25. And he went shaking and baking out to the 34-yard line. A 40-yard punt and a return of nine for Jackson. No score. Each team has had the ball once. Each has punted once. With Doug Johnson, with hand signals to the wide out to the left, the fullback is Rod Frazier was offset. The pass to Robert Gillespie. Fumble! Recovered by Marcus Spencer. And he's down to the 38-yard line. Salim Rashid knocked it out. Marcus Spencer recovered and returned to 13 yards. Florida now minus three for the season in turnovers. They played a whole game last week at Kentucky without turning it over once. And Steve Spurry was all smiles about that yesterday, but he won't be happy about this. Well, you could see the tackle came from the backside. Rashid with his arm on the football, and this is exactly what Alabama needed, Sean. Last year, they played the game 16 to 10. They lost. Florida helped them. Five turnovers. They need the same kind of help here in the swamp from Florida. Great field position right now. Both of these teams have had turnover problems and penalty problems all season. Alabama's turned it over 10 times in the last two weeks, six times in the win last week against Arkansas. Alexander with some nice moves. And again to the 32-yard line. He picked up six before Marquand Manuel. Known as m, m to the folks in the Gator program. Drove back Alexander, who's trying to make it five straight 100-yard rushing games. He had 165 last week against Arkansas. We were very impressed by what we saw from Sean after the game. He said it was the worst game of my career. He was very upset about his yeah. two fumbles, uncharacteristic of him. He made a lot of big plays, and when they needed a big run, he got it. But, you know, he's a perfectionist, and he knows that there's a lot of pressure on him, and those two fumbles, one was returned for a touchdown, very costly for his team. Second and four. Alabama looking for the game's first score. On a quick count, they gave it to Alexander. And he showed his toughness and power. He's a good slashing, sliding runner, but he also showed his strength inside last week. That time he lowered his shoulder to run over the defender, and Alex Brown took him down after a gain of two. This Florida defense is very young. They're getting better each week, but they are very fast. You're not going to run sideline to sideline on them very much. You've got to run north and south against this defense. And Alexander has very good vision. He knows how to find those creases and those cutback lanes and hit them with some acceleration. Big third down and two for Andrew Zow. Two tight ends in the game. Sean Draper and Terry Jones Jr. Zow after the fake has to throw. Caught for a first down to the 25-yard line by Freddie Millens. 
Really nice job by Andrew Zhao making a decision under duress. Here comes Millens in motion. Again, it's zone defense. He's right there sitting down in the hole, and Zhao found him at the last minute. And Millens did a nice job of not moving from that spot, giving the quarterback a good target, letting him see both numbers, and picking up the first down. What a week he had against Arkansas. Last Saturday, he had seven catches for 109 yards and a touchdown. He threw a 66-yard touchdown pass to Jason McCadley. Marvin Brown now the pullback, leading the way for Alexander. He picks his way down to the 22, where Buck Gurley and Marquand Manuel made the stop. And here's a look back at some of Freddie Millen's highlights from last Saturday in Tuscaloosa. We've mentioned the wide receiver screen. This one he took early in the game for a touchdown. Got good blocking downfield. And then maybe the play of the game for Alabama that really fooled the Arkansas defense. The reverse pass. Millen's a former high school quarterback. Laid it out perfectly for McAdley. Key touchdown last week. Bama playing today without Shamari Buchanan, one of their backup wide receivers who played in four and five wide receiver sets. He's suspended for this game. Brown had a grip on Zao, who threw it left-handed, incomplete, and almost picked off. He was looking for Antonio Carter. But it was a little bit too high for him, and it was nearly intercepted by the Gators. We'll take a look now. Here's Brown right on the bottom of your screen, working on Ellington. Again, the rookie, the, the freshman, got good pressure, quick pressure, and Zhao shows a little of his strength there at 221 pounds not to go down. But Alex Brown, if you get him one-on-one -on -one against a tackle, particularly a young tackle, he's going to have problems because he has a great jump, great anticipation of the snap count, particularly here in the swamp with the crowd noise. Third down and seven. Play clock at two as Zao took the snap out of the gun. And that pass is complete, but short of a first down to Freddie Millens. Marquand Manuel right there. Very little on the gain to the 19-yard line. And the field goal unit is coming on for Alabama. I think what you're going to see from Florida a lot today, they did it to Kentucky last week. When Andrew Zow's in the shotgun and there's four wide receivers, they're going to play a lot of zone defense. They're going to make him read the coverage and be patient and throw the football into the right spots. He did that time, but it was just short of the first down. 37-yard field goal try from Chris Kemp is good. The junior Florida native from Jacksonville gives Alabama the first points of the game. Steve Spurrier and the Gators down by three early, midway through the first quarter. Alabama capitalized on the Robert Gillespie fumble for the Chris Kemp 37-yard field goal. Bo Carroll waiting for the kickoff from Lane Bearden. Another short kickoff taken by Carroll on the run to the 11-yard line, running to his right. And knocked down as he crossed the 25. Good. Bo Carroll in a tailback. He and Gillespie considered interchangeable parts by Coach Spurrier. Gillespie just fumbled, so Carroll's in there. Johnson going deep for Darrell Jackson. He's going to go all the way for a Florida touchdown. 73 yards. Great read by Doug Johnson because he knew he had single coverage with Jackson against Reggie Miles. No help over the top from the safety. Miles tried to cut underneath to make a play on the football, but he couldn't get to it. Good read, good throw, Doug Johnson to Daryl Jackson. Jackson's fifth touchdown reception of the year and the extra point good from Jeff Chandler. That didn't take long, just one play for Florida to take the lead for the first time today. 7-3, Florida takes the lead. I can't believe this is what defensive coordinator Ellis Johnson wanted. Watch the two safeties here, Dixon and Spencer. As the play develops, they both collapse on the inside slot receiver. Outside technique by Reggie Miles. He has no help coming from the inside. A lot of field to work for with Daryl Jackson and Doug Johnson. Can't believe that was the way the coverage was designed for Alabama. Longest reception of Daryl Jackson's career and the longest completion for Doug Johnson. And a booming kickoff from the 20. Alexander 
Ahead for two. Keith Kelsey helped wrestle him to the ground. Kelsey, a fifth-year senior from Newbury, Florida, just a few miles from Gainesville. He was a backup for the last several seasons, that talented group of Florida linebackers. Starting three last year, Javon Kirst, Mike Peterson, and Johnny Rutledge, all taken in the first 51 picks of the most recent NFL draft. So three newcomers at linebacker, and all three, McCaslin, Davis, and Kelsey, faring well so far this season. On second down, Zal to the true freshman, Antonio Carter. He was hit immediately by Benny Alexander and Marquand Manuel. Time now for the Sun America Virtual Playbook. We talked about Alex Brown being a real terror coming off the edge. He's a great upfield pass rusher. So if you're Alabama, what do you do? How do you try to defend him? Well, a couple things. You can move a tight end over. Put another body there for him to come around. Or move a fullback into a wing position. He can chip and help out that tackle blocking him. Or you can call plays that attack his strength. Get him coming up the field, run a shovel pass or a draw inside of him. On third down and five, Zao throws for a first down. Antonio Carter with his first career touchdown reception last week in the win against Arkansas for the big first down out to the 36 where Benny Alexander chopped him down. Big throw by Andrew Zhao there on a big third down play. Carter another one of those quick young receivers who can make plays for you. They had trip formation. And Carter was just able to find a little soft spot against that zone defense and pick up the first down. Four wide receivers on first down for Alabama at its own 41. Zao with lots of time against the four-man rush. Alexander with lots of running room. At the 30 of Florida and all the way to the 20-yard line. 39 yards. Betty Alexander, no relation to Sean Alexander, saved the touchdown. shown a tendency on early downs. There's Alexander coming out of the backfield that they throw when he's in the shotgun on first down. So it's a zone defense. That was what Florida wanted to do, play a lot of zone, but they lost track of Alexander coming out of the backfield, and he burned it. Sean Alexander on first down, into the middle of the line for short gain across the 20 to the 19. A pickup of one. I mentioned trying to get the football to your playmaker's hands in areas where he can be successful. They've tried to run it. He hasn't had a whole lot of success running. That was a good call that time by Charlie Stubbs, getting him out into the secondary, getting him out in space where he could make a play with the football. That's where he is most dangerous, operating in space. And on second down, Zhao under pressure got it off. For a game to the 15-yard line for Jason McCadley. Keith Kelsey made the tackle on the final play of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, the score is Florida 7 and Alabama 3. We'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. First play of the second quarter is a big one for Alabama. Looking at third down and five at the Florida 15-yard line with the Gators leading 7-3. They go to the four wide receiver set. Actually, five receivers spread across the field for Andrew Zao. He throws. Caught. Freddie Millens taken down at the one-yard line by Marquand Manuel. Great pass protection up front for Alabama. Gave Zao lots of time to read that one and get the first down throw. And Todd, as was the case last season yeah. in the game in Tuscaloosa, Florida turnover is a big factor. Yeah, five of them last year, even though they moved the ball up and down against Alabama, clearly outgained them, but the turnovers kept Alabama in the ball game, and so far, it's doing it again today. First and goal from the one. Deep handoff, touchdown. Sean Alexander on the fourth try from the one-yard line. They do get the go-ahead touchdown. They had trouble going right up inside. This time they go a little wider, and the fullback McClintock gets a nice block on Eugene McCaslin, the linebacker, and gives a little space for Alexander to get into the end zone. 
Now Chris Kemp on to try the extra point. He's the backup kicker. He's still without Ryan Flutner, who did make the trip and might try a very long field goal. It wasn't a game-deciding situation today, but he still has a little bit of a leg muscle pull. The touchdown, an extra point, puts Bama back up by three. Alexander has now scored 11 of Alabama's 18 touchdowns this season. All 10 Bama points after Florida turnovers. Lane Bearden, a little bit of a stutter step as he approached the ball. Good kick to the corner. Bo Carroll trying to come all the way back across field. Now up the middle and out to the 20-yard line. Good coverage. Carroll picked up the first down with his carry out to the 30. And they give it to Carroll again. Good cut inside. He can fly. Touchdown saving tackle by Tony Dixon at the 32-yard line of Alabama. You know, Sean, I wondered whether Florida would really miss Ernest Graham's running style today against a physical defense because he was the more physical runner of the three, but so far, no real drop-off in the running game because of the vision and the quick cutting of Gillespie. And on this play, Carroll, just good vision patience and waiting for that lane to open then you see the speed and the acceleration through the hole. Carroll goes out after that 38 yard gain his longest run of the season. Four wide receivers out of the shotgun another bobble snap by Johnson a quick throw to Caldwell he has running room. He's also very fast and he's close to a first down it appears to have it at the 21 yard line. Tony Dixon made the stop. Doug Johnson having a little bit of a tough time getting the handle at the fumbled snap. They lost in the last possession. Had trouble with this shotgun snap. A little high and outside, but he does a nice job of, of maintaining it and staying with it. As you see, Rache Caldwell and Alex Willis, number 80, does a great job of blocking on the linebacker Merritt. That allowed Caldwell to, even though the play was slow and developing, catch up. There's a block right here. Nice job by Willis buying extra time for Caldwell. First and ten. Johnson for Jackson. Headed down. Excellent defensive play by Milo Lewis, who's been their best cornerback yeah. so far this season. The junior from Mountain View, California. In his first year at Bama as a junior college transfer from the City College of San Francisco. Alabama only has two interceptions this season. Milo has both of them. He has made a lot of big plays the last couple weeks. Did a nice job of timing that play and getting in front of the throw of Doug Johnson. Had what he wanted coverage-wise, but a good play by Milo Lewis. Four wide receivers again for Florida. Jackson, Hogabrook, Caldwell, and Willis. Johnson on second and ten. Fires a bullet well short of the first down to Alex Willis, the junior, former walk-on, who earned a scholarship this season in his junior year. He missed a practice earlier this week to take a test. That seemed to get under Coach Spurrier's <laughs> hands. I don't think the Alabama receivers are missing practice to take tests, but hey, that's part of the college life. That's his classroom, the practice field. Mm -hmm. Professor Spurrier. And he takes advantage of that time, particularly with the quarterbacks. Doug Johnson. Steve says we're striving for perfection. We know we're not going to get it, but that is the goal. Johnson's done a lot better just about every pass of the game, particularly in the decision-making this year. After the summer spent on campus, he throws that one away and a flag down for an intentional grounding call. If your quarterback is not real mobile, can you get pressure inside? And Cornelius Griffin. On the offense, penalty is lost on the down at the spot of the foul. So that will be and a new rule this year in college football, when it is grounding like this, they just mark the ball at the spot of the grounding. So right. To me, there's no real penalty for the quarterback to do that. If you know you're going to get sacked anyway, why not just throw it into the ground and hope you don't get the flag? Yeah, but it never used to be a loss of down, I don't think, and that's that's the difference now. At least they make you settle for the field goal attempt. And it'll be a long try, 41 yards for Chandler, who's perfect on the year in field goals until now. Never really did get it airborne. Low line drive, wide to the right. His first miss of the season. He had been seven of seven in field goal tries. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot College Football will continue after this word from your local station. Back in the swamp, Alabama leads by three. 
Nearly midway through the second quarter. Sean McDonough with Todd Blackledge and Michelle Tafoya. Delighted to have you with us. Now with a flag down. Steps up and throws. First down at the play stands. Antonio Carter tackled by Daryl Dixon. That's one true freshman tackling another at the 40-yard line, but there were flags thrown at each end of the line of scrimmage. I think they got Alex Brown for being off sides this time. We mentioned he had a great jump off the football. Off sides on the defense. Penalty refused. First down. He was a little too quick this time. He tries to get a great jump. He's watching the football, watching the quarterback, and just a hair early that time going against Dante Ellington. And good presence by Andrew Zhao, knowing that maybe he had the penalty, but staying with the play and getting the throw downfield for even more yardage. Three wide receivers. Out to the right, two to the left. Zhao throw, caught. Antonio Carter quickly becoming a big playmaker for Alabama. Inside the 45-yard line, gain of about five for another native Floridian. He's yeah. from Tallahassee. 13 of them on this Alabama team. A couple key guys, you know, Andrew Zhao, of course, played at Union County High School. I saw where his alma mater, great high school tradition, won a big game last night, 31-28 over Williston, a team that was previously undefeated. When Zhao was in high school, he led his team to... State titles, a sophomore and junior, senior year cut short by a torn left ACL. At that time, they'd won 40 games in a row. He was 40 and 0. He has shot Alexander wide open, and the ball's overthrown by a yard or two. Alexander was in the clear inside the 20. But Zhao's throw was just a bit too long. Perfect setup play. Alabama makes a living on the wide receiver screen. Watch them fake the screen and slip Alexander outside. They've thrown enough wide receiver screens to make Florida respect that. They faked the wide receiver screen, and they had just what they wanted. Alexander running all by himself down the sideline, just couldn't catch up to the football. And Todd, in a game like this where you're a big underdog and you have the mm. opportunity to make a big play, you have to make it. I mean, that call's only going to work one time, you know, and they had it set up. They just couldn't make the connection. They spread the field, and Zao goes out of the shotgun. Just the four-man rush, and the throw on target. Alexander lost his helmet, but held onto the ball for a first down. And he's slow to get up at the 39-yard line. Andre Davis put a pop on him. Another good job by Charlie Stubbs getting Alexander out and involved in the offense, working right in between the linebackers against the zone defense. He knew what he needed for the first down. He got beyond the first down marker and then gave his quarterback a nice target to throw to. Alabama doing a great job of possessing the football now, Sean. Over 20 minutes they've had the football, only 8 minutes and 14 seconds for Florida. How do you defend that offense? Keep them on the sideline. That's right. They've done a great job. John Bohannon, tackled by Keith Kelsey. Bohannon's a junior from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Perhaps he knows the answer to our Aflac trivia question, the longest home winning streak in NCAA football history. Miami, with those great teams from the mid 80s into the mid 90s, 158 straight at the Orange Bowl. They talk about the Swamp today the way they used to talk about the Orange Bowl. I mean, nobody liked going in there to play. That was a very, very hard place to play. Get out of the gun. They spread the field with receivers. Zhao, high throw, but a good catch. And McCadley has a first down. Jason down to the 26-yard line. Tackled by Marquand Manuel. And Zhao is now 14 for 19 passing. They're trying to take the ball and put it in Zhao's hand, make him beat him, and right now he's doing a good job. But credit the offensive line of Alabama, controlling things up front, giving Zhao time to find McCadley on this play. We talked about Florida's offensive line before the game. Alabama's offensive line here in the first half playing extremely well themselves. You get the sense Charlie Stubbs calling plays with confidence, mm -hmm. too. Mike DeBose said, I hired Charlie to open up the offense. He didn't really do that. The first couple of weeks, he was trying too hard to make everybody happy. Alexander's making him happy as he powers toward another first down inside the five-yard line. Gerard Ward, you know the tackle after Marquand Manuel made the original hit. You know, 
and the thing that Charlie's doing, here he is in the middle, is he's again doing a great job of mixing formations. He's showing four wide receivers, shotgun, then he's going two tight ends. He's running with the fullback. He's mixing the formations and creating some problems for John Hoke's defense right now. Sean, I would go play action pass here on first down and try to get it in the end zone on this first down. They give it to Sean Alexander. The cutback move gets him down inside the three. Eugene McCaslin made the tackle. Can't say enough about Alabama's proficiency on third down in the ballgame. Six of ten. You know, in the last two weeks, Florida's defense has been great on third down. Hold Tennessee and Kentucky to combine seven for 30, 23% conversions. But today, Alabama has been outstanding on third down. 14 carries for 36 yards and a touchdown for Sean Alexander. Two tight ends, Draper and Jones. Alexander lost yardage. Driven back behind the five-yard line. Derek Chambers and Keith Kelsey made the stop. Steve Spurrier looking up at the clock. You wonder if he'd be considering another timeout here. The reason I like the play action on first down is now you're in a situation where Florida's expecting pass. I mean, they're going to defend for the pass. First down, you have a chance to maybe fool them by a good play action fake. Now, a lot of more pressure on Andrews out to make a play on this third down play than there was on first or second down. You hate to settle for field goals against Florida because you know how quickly they can score touchdowns. 17th play of the drive. More than eight and a half minutes long. Alexander throws a block. Zao scrambling, throws right through the hands of the tight end, Terry Jones Jr. There's a flag down in the backfield. Two guys were moving. The fullback, McClintock, tried to reset into a new position, and there was motion by the wide receiver. Illegal shift. Two men were moving by the offense. Penalty is refused. Fourth down. A devastating one of those before the snap penalties. Watch the fullback and the motion man. An illegal shift called on the fullback because he started at the same time. And DuBose wanted to get a timeout. He knew the play was doomed because of the penalty. Again, 38 penalties coming in, 20 of them before the snap penalties. That one hurt. Chris Kemp from an awkward angle, a 22-yard field goal is good. What a drive by Alabama. The only negative was that it did not end at a touchdown. Yeah. And the half ends. Very impressive first half by Alabama. But just a six-point lead for the time. Here's Michelle with Steve Spurrier. Well, Coach, Alabama has done well on third down, and they've benefited from a couple of turnovers. How do you change the flow of this game? Well, we got to stop them, obviously. It's the first time I remember one possession in a, in a quarter, but uh, we, we're stopping ourselves, you know, the fumbles, the interceptions. Offensively, we hadn't had the ball much, but when we're out there, we need to do something, and we got to stop them. But we're not in too bad a shape at 13-7 to seven with only about 15 plays to hold. Coach, thanks. Sean, let's send it back to you. <laughs> All right, Michelle. At halftime, the score is Alabama 13 and Florida 7. Good thing Michelle has excellent speed. Here's Tim Brando in New York. Alabama leads by six a moment ago. Michelle spoke with Mike Dubose. Coach, your offensive line did a great job neutralizing Alex Brown in the first half. How key was that to keeping your offense on the field as long as you did? Well, I think it's important that we mix up what we're doing, run and pass, to keep them off balance. I mean, our offensive line has done a great job. Uh, it's a 60-minute football game, though. There's a lot of football left to play. Yeah, six-point lead is never safe with these guys. What have you asked your defense in the, to do in the second half? Uh, I ask our football team to go out and play the next 30 minutes harder than they played the first 30, and if we do, we'll be all right. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. And Alabama will get the ball first to begin the second half as Jeff Chandler will kick off. And Freddie Millens is back deep near the goal line. Alabama fans making the noise. The 85,000 Gator fans seem a little bit stunned by what they saw in the first half. Chandler's kickoff is a touchback. No chance for Sean Toure or Santonio Beard there to bring it back. And Todd, really the perfect formula yeah. for an upset of a top-ranked team used by Alabama in that first half. Time of possession, no turnovers, a limited number of penalties. You're right. They only gave Florida 17 plays. They controlled the football game. They took the crowd out of it. The only thing I think that's still going to come back to haunt them is not getting a touchdown on that last great scoring drive that they had where they had to settle for the field goal. 
They go with the spread formation on first and ten from their own 20-yard line. Andrews out. With Brown picked up well again. Finds Sam Collins, the true freshman, with his first catch of the day and third of his career. And he's out to the 28-yard line. Gain of eight on first down. Florida actually outgained Alabama in terms of total yardage with the number of snaps eye-popping when you look at the stat sheet. Alabama ran 41 plays from scrimmage Florida, 18. Yep. And third down conversions, Alabama 6 of 11 in that first half. That's a way to keep the football and keep the chains moving. Eric Collins with a gain of eight on the reception, second down and two. John Alexander tackled by Buck Gurley and Alex Brown very close to the first down at the 30-yard line. But Alabama did a great job neutralizing Alex Brown in the first half. He kept flipping back from side to side, and really when he went against Chris Samuel, he didn't have much effectiveness at all. Samuel is too good of an athlete. He moves his feet too well, and Alex Brown couldn't use his athleticism to beat that big guy. I would expect to see him try to crank it up on Dante Ellington even more in this second half, but no sacks today and only two pressures in the entire first half. Third down, a short one. The fullback, McClintock, has the first down out to the 33, upended by Andre Davis. Dustin McClintock, the junior from Quinlan, Texas, moves the chains. Today, the 200th game on television for Alabama. A milestone. On first and 10, it's Alexander for five, out to the 40. Alabama, for those who are curious, made its first appearance on CBS later that season in the Orange Bowl, 1951, and defeated Boston College 61 to six. Tough day for the Eagles. Just 40 yards rushing on 17 carries for Sean Alexander, the Heisman Trophy candidate. But his team is leading by six with nine minutes to play in the third quarter. On the gun on second and five. South pass intercepted. Benny Alexander's going to score on the first crucial mistake by Alabama. Sean, really the first bad throw that Andrew Zhao has made in the ball game. They're trying to run the wide receiver screen again. They're going to throw the screen out here, coming underneath. But watch, Andrew Zhao just doesn't get down on the football. There's no pressure. He just threw the ball too high, right into the hands of Benny Alexander. The first crucial mistake, as you mentioned, and the first bad throw that Andrew Zhao has made. And the lead again for Florida. As Jeff Chandler added the go-ahead extra point. 42 yards on the interception return for Benny Alexander. And the Gators now lead by one. Andrew Zhao with the critical turnover. The interception thrown to his former high school teammate, Benny Alexander. They played together just down the road apiece. At Union County High School. Benny's third interception of the season. He has three of the four for Florida this year. And the thing for Andrew Zhao now, Sean, is he's got to shake that off and come right back on the field. That got the crowd back into the ball game. Andrew Zhao did about everything right in the first half. 15 of 21, no turnovers, no bad throws, no real bad decisions. He made a bad decision there. He's got to shake it off and come back. How demoralizing can it be for a team on the road, hostile environment, the most hostile in the country, according to the Alabama coaches, you have the game going your way virtually throughout yeah. and with one play you're behind. Well, that's just the way football is. I mean, you've got to shake that off and know that you're playing well enough to win the football game. You just got to protect the ball. Antonio Pierre, the true freshman, with a good return out to the 30-yard line. On first and 10, they go to the ground for Alexander, trying to break free 
And he has the first down. Not a bad idea after some difficulty to go to your best player. You asked about how demoralizing it would be for a team. They've got to be able to shake it off because they know they've had enough success in this ball game. They've had a lot of things go well for them. Running the football, throwing the football, mixing it up, putting this defense back on their heels. Here they come right back, running to the short side, away from the tight end. Sean Alexander breaking tackles. Fifty-one yards rushing now, 98 total yards. Inside handoff. And a yard for Alexander before Andre Davis made the primary hit. And Alexander's going to have to do some work here in the final quarter and a half if he's going to have another 100-yard rushing game as he has for every game this season. He's had 12 career games of 100 yards or more, two of 200 or more, including the school record as a freshman back in 1996. And LSU rushed to 291 yards. Zao with a four-man rush. Running out of time. Did a little dance and got sacked by Thaddeus Bullard. The first sack of the day for the Gators. Andrew Zao a little afraid to pull the trigger on this one. He got picked off his last throw. He held onto this ball a little bit too much. He has time to make the throw. Right now he's got to get rid of the football. Don't hang on to it and give a sack. A sack, again, is a play that gets this crowd fired up, gets them right into the ball game. He didn't want to throw another interception, but throw that one up in the seats and give yourself a better third down. Only first sack of the season for Florida. First today, Zao on third down and long now. They need to get just across midfield. They do. What a throw by Zao to Antonio Carter for the first down. He beat the true freshman Daryl Dixon with coverage. 21 yards and gives Zao some credit just when it looked like he was yep. starting to get a little bit shaky. That was a perfect throw with a lot on it. Well, he had happy feet on that one, too, but he stayed in there. And again, I can't say enough about this offensive line, how much time they're giving Zao. Stayed in there and made a solid throw down the field to Carter. Zone defense again, third and long by Florida, and Carter found the seam in the zone. Huge third down conversion. That was third and 19, and they picked it up with the 21-yard game. Zao, 18 out of 26. Pump fake. Avoids the rush, throws deep for Alexander, wide open, touchdown Alabama! Sean, confidence is so important for a quarterback. He makes the huge play on third down right when it looks like he's losing it a little bit. He comes back and stands in there and makes a great throw here with the pump fake. He overthrew Alexander in the first half for a touchdown, this time right on the money to him. It's just amazing to see in two plays the swing of confidence in the young quarterback, Andrew Zow. When we talked about would they be demoralized, the mm -hmm. answer, obviously, no. Great character shown by the tide. Interesting decision for Coach DuBose. He's going to go for two here to get a seven-point lead. But a touchdown and an extra point can only tie him. Of course, if you don't get it, two field goals could beat you. And the throw is low, incomplete. It bounced into Jason McCadley. He's arguing, but even from up here, it looked like the ball bounced in, and we're about nine miles above the playing field. So an interesting decision. He wanted to have the seven-point lead. Still a long way to go in this one. I know our old friend Terry Donnie would say, with this much time left, just take every point you can get. <laughs> Back in a moment. Andrew Zhao to Sean Alexander to put Alabama back on top. Interesting call with Terry Donahue last year. You used to debate this all the time. And Terry's philosophy was with a lot of time left, just take the point. You might want that point later on. There is a lot of time left in this one, but DuBose went for two and the seven point lead came up short. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that. At this point in the game with this much time, go ahead and take the point. Now the kickoff. Lane Bearden and a good run. Bo Carroll about six yards deep in the end zone. Bo Carroll the running back behind Doug Johnson. Carroll broke free from one tackler at the line of scrimmage and picked up four. 
I made this point earlier, and, and I really do think that Florida misses Ernest Graham because he's a physical runner. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with Bo Carroll or Robert Gillespie. They're very quick. They have good vision. They're speedy backs. But Ernest Graham had that ability to give him a little more toughness at that position. They have had a little bit of trouble running the football up inside against Alabama. And one score by the Florida offense. The other on interception return. There's the tight end, Aaron Kenny. Hasn't played much the last couple of weeks with a neck injury in there now. Just his third reception of the season to give Florida a first down out near the 37. Marvin Constant, Marcus Spencer, Tony Dixon all in on the stop on Kinney, the senior from Ashland, Virginia. Take a look at the, the three backs. Ernest Graham was the leading carrier. And the good thing for Florida is that Gillespie and Carroll had gotten a lot of playing time. And so they weren't like they were just starting to get playing time when he got hurt. But he's a little different. Gillespie and Carroll are very similar in their styles. Graham a little more the physical guy. Ball spotted at the 39, first and 10. Johnson throws. Nice catch along the far sideline by Alex Willis. Close to another first down. There's Graham, not in uniform, just his game jersey on. I hope that he'll be back from the deep thigh bruise next week at LSU, a game we'll have for you here on CBS. See the stretch by Willis. Great job catching the football with his hands, working on Reggie Miles. Outstanding catch by Willis, going up with his hands and catching the football. That's a hard throw, too. That ball's coming with a little zip on it. Reaches up there and spears it. Second and inches. Bo Carroll running behind the left side of the line into the secondary in the Bama territory with a first down at the 37-yard line where Darius Gilbert made the stop. That's 14 more on the run for Carroll. Alabama thinking pass a little more there. They've got their nickel defense in, and Bo Carroll does a nice job running behind that offensive line, finding a nice hole in there, a nice seam, and using his speed. First and 27 now. The ball back at the 36-yard line. Man open, Willis down the sideline. Close to the first down at the nine-yard line. Alex Willis, a real study in perseverance in the program, walked on, was way down the depth chart for quite a while. He finally earned a scholarship and some playing time this season. And with the injury to Travis Taylor, he's become a much more important man. There's Willis. Now Alabama tried to fool Doug Johnson. They brought some guys up and then tried to move him out late. And nobody got deep enough with Alex Willis. Johnson hung in there, read the defense, was not fooled, and got the big throw. First and goal from just inside the nine. Johnson to the end zone. Touchdown, Daryl Jackson. That gives them a one-point lead. And now if you're Steve Spurry, do you go for two? Try to make it a three-point lead. Or they are going to go. Time left, you just take the point. He's going to go for two. Darrell Jackson, the quick slant, got inside the coverage. Good series by Doug Johnson there. Made a couple big throws, good reads. Single coverage to Darrell Jackson and a good throw. We've seen that shot of Steve before where he starts <laughs> nodding just as the play's about to begin. Like he knows yeah. if they execute, he's got what he wants. be a touchdown. That's and you right. can see it in his face. Three catches, 93 yards, two touchdowns for Jackson. Now the try for two and a three-point lead. Wells, the tight end. Lost the ball, but he was in first. That's a two-point conversion for Florida. And a three-point lead, 22 to 19. That was a little bit woozy as he got up. And the man who hit him, Milo Lewis, is still down. They might have gone just about helmet to helmet, it seems. That was quite a collision. Again, the tight end, seldom used, used very effectively in this scoring drive. And right at the goal line, the collision. The ball is all that has to cross the plane, and according to the headlinesman, the ball did cross the plane for the conversion. Kirk Wells with two big plays on that scoring drive. Darrell Jackson 
the junior from Tampa, Florida. He was a great basketball player at Tampa Catholic. Was offered dual scholarships, the opportunity to go to several top football basketball schools to play both sports. He just won the top in football. Billy Donovan offered him a tryout here for the basketball game. He says he just wants to play football. Freddie Mullins didn't even reach the 20. Chopped down at the 16-yard line by Daryl Owens. Tied at its own 31. Zao throws, deflected, up for grabs, and almost caught on the ricochet. Keith Kelsey deflected it. Freddie Millens dove for it. Boy, Zao has nervous feet right now. Yeah, he does. He, he, he still does. Even though he made the big touchdown throw to Alexander, he's still a little bit nervous in there. And again, Florida's given him mostly zone defense. They're making him stay in the pocket and read it. We were told by the Alabama coaches that they would stick with their plan of the first few weeks of the season and play Tyler Watts, the freshman, for at least one series, but we haven't seen him today. Sean Bohannon, the one back now, as Alexander gets a breather, quick pass to Millens. He cut it inside, and that stopped at the 36. Looked like he had blockers to the yeah, outside. I think you're right. But he ran back toward the bulk of the defense, and Daryl Dixon took him down. A couple other receivers out there to try to provide an escort for Millens. He thought he saw something inside. All that was inside were Gators, though. <laughs> big third down. They're nine out of 15 on third down today. Third and five in the final seconds of the third. And it's five or less. They've made six of eight. They pitch to Alexander. Another conversion on third down for the Tide as Alexander advanced the ball to the 44-yard line. What a nice call by Charlie Stubbs. They haven't shown the shovel pass. They haven't shown anything different like this. They try to invite the upfield rush. Now, Mitchell actually does a pretty good job playing this play, but Alexander just breaks the arm tackle of the defensive back for Marty. Uh, Florida was in position to make the play, just not going to bring Sean Alexander down without a good solid tackle. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. With the score, Florida 22 and Alabama 19 will return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Florida with a three-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter. First and 10, Alabama. Zao after the fake had to get rid of it quickly. Antonio Carter, good move. He's across midfield with another first down. And Todd, you have to admire this Alabama team, regardless of how it turns out. Uh, they put up a spirited battle all day long, and you can really see when the coaches talk about the talent on this team emerging. Yeah. It is. Well, they've got a lot of good young talent. They've got an experienced offensive line that has really played well today. And Andrew Zhao, what more can you say? Every time it looks like the game's starting to get away from him and the pressure's going to get to him, he comes up and makes another play on third down. Great third down conversions for the Alabama offense today. And credit to the beleaguered Alabama coaching staff. They've had a good plan on both sides of the ball today. Sean Alexander. Thrown for a loss. Back to the 45-yard line. Just one loss for Florida in Steve Spurrier's 10 years when the Gators have been ahead after three quarters. And that was the last home loss to Auburn in 1994. tackle and you've been talking about it all day the offensive line doing a great job giving Zhao time and he found Millens for 32 there and I really think John Hope may have
have to make some changes and say, you know what? He's beating us with all this zone. He's hanging in there. He's reading our coverage, and he's making throws. We're going to need to change up and come after the guy. Try to pressure him and put some pressure on him because right now, with the zone defense Florida's given him, Andrew Zhao is making it happen for Alabama. John Hoke in his first year as the defensive coordinator here took over for Bob Stoops. Went on to immediate success at Oklahoma as head coach. Alexander up the middle and Andre Davis made the stop and it seems like Davis is in on virtually every tackle on the running plays. John Hoke came after five years with Larry Smith as the secondary coach at Missouri. Native of Kettering, Ohio is Hoke near Dayton. Very impressive man when you yeah, he is with him. Obviously an excellent football coach and very popular guy already with his defensive players. I'd like to see Alabama try to get the ball to Terry Jones Jr. here, the tight end off play action. This could be a pass. Back to the quarterback. It's well defended. Zao couldn't catch it. They didn't fool Robert Cromarty. He stayed right out there, saw Zao coming, and lined up for the deflection. Yeah, good discipline by Cromarty. As a quarterback, if you're running this play, you're hoping maybe just if I go halfway out there, maybe they'll forget about me. But Cromartie stayed right at home and defended it. And give credit to Zao for going up and making a play on the football, not letting it get intercepted, even though Cromartie was there to make the play. Alabama with yet another third down. Third and 10 at the 14-yard line of Florida. Florida leads by three. Sean Bohannon in the game, and he's split out. Alexander's gone to the sideline. Zao, and again, just a four-man rush. Throws to the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Antonio Carter puts Bama back up. Sean, I'm really surprised they didn't go after him again. They just rushed four, and this offensive line for Alabama is too good. They're not getting to Andrew Zhao with only four people. Watch how much time Zhao has to hang in there, to step up in the pocket, to read the defense, and then make the throw. Antonio Carter proving that he is another go-to guy along with Freddie Millens, two very young, talented players. And the extra point good from Kemp. And Alabama leads by four. Twelve and a half minutes remaining in Gainesville. Alabama on top by four. Five wide receivers, four on one side. This is Antonio Carter. Watch him drift in there. The only reason he gets to the open area is because of the protection. He's not open when he immediately stops his route. He just keeps drifting, drifting. But Zhao had so much time to let him get to that open area, they make the touchdown catch. Great protection. Six catches today for 58 yards for Carter. He had three catches for his career coming in to today's game. Bo Carroll. Now to the 28-yard line. Bo Carroll, the back behind Doug Johnson. Johnson throws to Jackson, caught for a first down. To the 40-yard line, Tony Dixon made the stop. In a 12. Five yards receiving now for Daryl Jackson. That's his third straight game of 100 receiving yards or more. Under 12 minutes remaining. Johnson with all day to throw. Throws a strike, caught for another first down in Alabama territory. At the 45-yard line, Alex Willis hit by Reggie Miles. Sean mentioned the numbers for Daryl Jackson today. He has really stepped up ever since Travis Taylor's been hurt. Caught the long touchdown pass earlier in the first quarter. Six foot, 201 pounds. He's got some physical ability. Strong receiver, got inside for the touchdown there. His second one has really become Doug Johnson's main guy. Out of the shotgun, Johnson throwing up his back foot. Another catch made by Alex Willis. First down, Gators at the 22. 
Herschel Bolden and Marcus Spencer were near Willis, but he made the catch in traffic. Great job by Willis adjusting to the football because this ball was thrown early, but it was thrown behind the receiver. Watch him turn, get his body around, and catch the ball with his hands. A great adjustment to the football by Alex Willis. Not a very well-thrown ball by Doug Johnson, but thrown early enough that the defense couldn't react to it. Five catches, 81 yards for Willis. Best game of his career here at the University of Florida. The inside hand off to Bo Carroll, and he went nowhere. Kenny King tripped him up behind the line of scrimmage. The true freshman from Daphne, Alabama, made a big play. Sean McDonough with Todd Blackledge and Michelle Tapoya sold out Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Florida's 30-game home winning streak on the line in this battle with Alabama, featuring six lead changes. A two-to-one edge in number of plays run for Alabama. A decided edge in time of possession. One big mistake on a Zao interception return for touchdown. Johnson throws incomplete for Bo Carroll. Broken up by Darius Gilbert from the 25. Third down and 12. Johnson throws short. And they're going to spot the ball down back at the 21-yard line. In either event, it was going to be well short of the first down. Darius Gilbert credited with the tackle on Bo Carroll. And it's at the 21-yard line, so they need about seven and a half yards. This is the largest crowd ever at the Swamp, 85,721. The 20 largest crowds in the history of the state of Florida for sporting events, college or pro, have all been here at the Swamp. And now the field goal unit is on for Florida. Right in the middle of the field, Jeff Chandler with his first miss of the season earlier today. And that one's built from 37 yards out. It's a one-point lead for Alabama with 9.42 left. Jeff Chandler, a junior from Jacksonville, telecommunications major, former walk-on who earned a scholarship this fall. Really solidified their kicking game last year at Alabama when he took over for Collins Cooper after Cooper's miss in the overtime at Tennessee. Kicked three field goals in their win with Tuscaloosa. He's been rock solid ever since. Antonio Beard back at the goal line along with Freddie Millens. Good kick by Chandler. No chance for Millen. About seven or eight yards deep. These fans doing their best to make sure that doesn't happen. Under nine minutes left. No timeouts left for Florida. Alabama has two remaining. Out of the gun. Millens. First down. Big gainer out to the 42-yard line where Eugene McCaslin made the tackle. 22 yards on the pickup for Freddie Millens. Millens and Antonio Carter are so good with the ball after the catch. They both have such quick feet. Watch Millens when he catches the ball, how quickly he gets upfield. A couple moves, he's quickly up the field behind the blocking of his guard, Griff Redmill in there, and a big gain, 22 yards. But he's so quick with his feet after he catches the football. 95 yards receiving now. Millen's on the verge of back-to-back 100-yard -back days. Dustin McClintock powering out across the 45 to the 46. Gain of four. Last man to reach 100 yards receiving in consecutive games. The great Ozzie Newsom back in November of 19. 77. For the most part, they kept the ball on the ground over the years. Yeah, <laughs> they have. They've had some good quarterbacks, too. And for the most part, they did run it and run it well. Millens himself, the high school quarterback, through the pass last week. Mike Dubois says he can envision times in the future where they'll line him up behind the center in a quarterback position. Zao pitches to Bohannon. Now is Brown. One of his few big plays today. We called his name very little. 
And Todd, it seemed to me, and Brown had a monster game on national television against Tennessee, but he was getting an awful lot of hype really based on two games, that game and the game last week against Kentucky. Yeah, and on this play, he makes a good read. You want this play if that guy's coming up the field hard and coming at your quarterback. But Alex Brown did a nice job of reading this play and actually being able to defend both the quarterback and the pitch man. You don't expect him to be able to, do, to defend both players on that. Remember, Billings used to be the quarterback. He wants to throw this one away. The Florida sideline complaining that that was two forward passes, and they get the flag very late. I tell you what, that's another very late flag that you wonder if it was influenced by the Florida sideline because that took forever to come out. Intentional grounding on the offense. Lost it down at this spot. Fourth down. Well, the line of scrimmage. The 35, let's see if Millens is behind Zaldo when he makes the catch. Sure he is. That's not a forward, second forward pass. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's not a good call either. There's a receiver right there. Yeah. Snapper late coming onto the field. Bradley led better. Clock down to one. A problem along the line of scrimmage, and the Gators are going to take over at the 25-yard line. There's a flag on the play. A flag thrown along the line of scrimmage. Ledbetter late running onto the field. It was a bad snap that struck Marvin Brown. Procedure on the offense. There's the second potentially critical mistake by Alabama. Because of the crowd noise, Sean, Marvin Brown is trying to make sure the protection is communicated. Watch him right in the middle, number six. He steps up once. Now he's going to step up again to make sure the call is right. And the center snapped the ball, did not hear the cadence, snapped it right into the personal protector. Credit that one to the crowd here in the swamp. And Steve, very calm over yeah. that turn of events. Now he's already in field goal range to take the lead. And first and 10, Gators at the Tide 15. Last year against Alabama, they had a terrible time in the red zone. including three fumbles inside the three-yard line. Gillespie. And the players jumping on him thinking the ball was out. He had it. Salim Rashid took him down. Alabama defense has played very well today. The Gators have 25 points, but one of those touchdowns, an interception returned by Benny Alexander. And yet now Mike DeBose depending on that defense one more time here with five and a half minutes left in the ball game. Second down and nine. Johnson with lots of time to the end zone. Darrell Jackson with his third touchdown of the game and a terrific catch on a ball thrown behind him. And Florida leads again. Doug Johnson has really thrown the ball well here in the second half. Quick read, he sees Jackson right into the open area between the safeties. And again, Jackson, a nice adjustment on the football to catch it with his hands. Steve Spurrier got the touchdown, electing to go for two now. Now they pitch it to Bo Carroll, virtually untouched. He gets the two points. And the lead is seven for the Gators with 5.15 left. Great job by Doug Johnson going on the quick count. They got out of the huddle, they snapped the ball quickly, and Alabama's defense had no chance to respond to the quick toss to the sideline. Watch how quickly they snap the football. Alabama's still trying to get set on defense, and Carroll is able to walk into the end zone. Good use of the snap count that time by Doug Johnson. <laughs> Guiding that one in. <laughs> well, 
Not a lot of time left in this one. Only one timeout left for either team. It belongs to Alabama. Here's Jeff Chandler to kick off. Line drive kickoff. Picked up by Millens at the five. Trying to get outside at the 25. And he runs out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Nice return by Millens. Now brings them out right over the ball. With the spread set. Four man rush. Bullard couldn't pull him down. He's in trouble from behind. He throws. Caught by Millens to the 47 yard line. Of the Florida Gators, Bullard couldn't get the sack. A 22-yard completion. And what a game this yeah. has been. Lead changes of plenty and all kinds of momentum shifts and big plays. You know what? Watching Andrew Zhao the first couple weeks of this season, he didn't do a whole lot to impress me, but he has impressed me today. His ability to, to maintain his poise, to use his strength to shake off tacklers, and to make throws downfield. He has done a marvelous job today in a very hostile environment for a young quarterback. With that catch, Millen's over 100 yards again. For the second straight week, first man since Ozzie Newsom to do that at Bama. Zow throws a little low. Had the man open. Trying to thread that through a couple of defenders. Looking for Antonio Carter. The pass short. It'll be second and ten. Let's go back to the touchdown to go ahead. All Doug Johnson is doing is he's eyeballing this safety right here. He's going to watch how he reacts. If he goes outside at all, he knows he has Jackson coming in behind him on the post. Soon as he saw Spencer flatten a little bit to the outside, he knew where he was going with the football. I watched him on the practice field, and that was one of the things Steve Spurrier was really going after him. Keep your eyes on that safety. Know what he's doing from the time you take your drop. Doug Johnson, a very impressive game today as well for the Gators. Second and ten. Val throws short. Carter will try to do the work on his feet. Could not. No gain on the play. Driven back by Andre Davis. Marquand Manuel also jumped on the pile. And yet another third down for Alabama. This one will be third and ten. With four minutes remaining, the clock is running. Carter has done some nice things for Alabama today. That time made a maybe a freshman mistake. Tried to get a little too fancy and make a big play rather than just trying to get straight up the field and get something out of that play. It was well defended by the Gators. Now they brings up third and ten. Now telling his troops to get up there quickly. It took a long time to get that play in from the sideline. The play clock at two as they snap it. Zhao in traffic throws short of Carter to be fourth and ten. Zhao knocked down after he threw it. And I think that play, as much as anything, was the result of the fact that they were slow getting the play called. He was under duress from the time he got to the line of scrimmage. He had to hurry up the snap. He didn't have time to read the defense in a pre-snap read, and then he hurried the throw and made a bad throw. 3.33 left. Alabama with just one timeout. They burned one a moment ago to get ready defensively for the two-point try by Florida. Patrick Morgan, undoubtedly Florida will be alert to a possible fake with this field position and the situation of the game. Darrell Jackson back for the punt. Morgan will punt it away. High but short. Jackson muffed it. It's free at the 22-yard line. The infamous scrum. There's a whole lot of fighting going on down in the bottom of the pile right now. The Alabama players think they have it. No signal from the officials. Now it is. Alabama's ball at the 22-yard line. Looked like Marvin Brown was at the bottom of the pile to recover. Of course, he was the man hit right. by the snap moments ago. That was a huge play that led to the Gators taking the lead. What an irony. The ball, the last punt, went off of him, creating the turnover, setting up Florida for the go-ahead touchdown. Now Jackson, a short punt, moved up on it in position. Where they're very close to not giving him enough yep. room to make that catch, too. It's supposed to be a two-yard radius. Zow pitches to Alexander, trying to break a tackle. Robert Cromartie late tackled him after a gain of the 17. 
Struggles to the 14. Couple of yards short of the first down. Manuel made the tackle. Millens with double digits in receptions now. 10 catches, 120 yards. Again, Andrew Zhao doing a nice job buying himself some extra time. And finds his receiver, Millens, on the move. The only thing I'd like to see Alabama do a better job of right now is get the play called and in and out of the huddle quicker so they don't have to waste another timeout. The play clock down inside of 10 right now. Give Andrew Zhao a chance to read the coverage in the pre-snap. But you didn't have a moment ago. They snap it with three. It's an inside handoff. Alexander knocked down, and this will be a crucial spot. It looks like they're going to spot him down short. He bounced forward with the ball, but they are going to mark him down at the 13, and it's going to be fourth down. And it's a long one, almost a yard and a half. If I'm Alabama and Charlie Stubbs, I think give the ball to 37 and run behind number 60. They give it to Alexander. First down, and he goes in for the touchdown! They're going to go for one and the extra point to tie. Watch the push up front by Alabama. Good block by McClintock and then just broken tackles by Sean Alexander. He's done it all day. He hasn't had a huge day running, but when they've needed him to make a play, he's made a play. A critical extra point try for Chris Kemp. Right down the middle. And they're tied at 33 with 125 left. Neither team has a timeout. And Todd, we think back to the point that was raised in the third quarter, midway through the quarter, when Mike DuBose scored a touchdown. Alabama scored a touchdown. Mike DuBose elected to go for two. We yep. said at the time, maybe then you just go for the one and take the six-point lead. You might want that point later. He'd like that point now. We showed the flashback of the last two weeks a little bit ago, and I mean, if you're an Alabama fan, you're getting your money's worth as far as excitement from this team this year. Three weeks in a row in the same kind of situation into the final minute. Could be a situation where they need to win to save the job of Mike Dubow. The rumors continue to circulate. For the loss today, he could be fired immediately. Lane Bearden will kick off. From the two, upended at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Johnson throws short. Gillespie hustles to the sideline. Both teams were a little careless with burning timeouts. And it could have been a factor each way. It might be a non-factor either way, too. Count your Bailey chased. Gillespie out of bounds. Tough situation for Ellis Johnson now. Do you rush three? Do you rush four? Do you try to pressure Doug Johnson? Doug Johnson has had a very good game throwing the football. They've not gotten much pressure on him. Looks like Alabama lining up for another three-man rush here. Going to drop eight into coverage. Johnson throws, dropped. That came out of the arms of Daryl Jackson. One of the very few mistakes he's made this season. Normally very sure-handed. This time he let the ball get into his body a little bit. Wasn't able to get his hands on the football. And how often do you see a receiver when he doesn't catch it with his hands, he lets it get to the body, hits those shoulder pads, and bounces back out of there. And now a big third down play. Third and four. Gators at their own 27. Just a three-man rush. Inside handoff, a good call. They get the first down with Gillespie. Out to the 37. Bear in mind, all they need is a field goal to win. And Chandler's proven that he has range out around 50 yards. He can kick a long one. And the good thing in college football, the clock stops till they reset the chain. So it, it works like you have a timeout. You're able to communicate the play at the line of scrimmage and only take a few seconds before the next snap. Gators from their own 37. 48 seconds left. Three-man rush again, pass caught, Rashad Caldwell getting closer to the field goal range, 
And the 45-yard line of Alabama, an 18-yard gain. They're playing very soft here up front, Todd. Just a three-man rush the last couple of plays. Three-man rush. They're bringing in all new defensive linemen, trying to get fresh bodies in there. Ellis Johnson deciding, I'm better off trying to keep eight guys in coverage, make them throw short, don't give up a big play down the heart. Well, the strategy most of the day worked very well. Johnson throws, dropped again by Jackson in traffic. He got laid out by Marcus Spencer on the sideline. But it looked like the ball was gone before the hit. Jackson just couldn't pull it in on the fingertips. This is a cover two zone right in between the corner and the safeties where you want to throw the football. It was a good throw, but a great break on the football by Marcus Spencer to separate the ball from the receiver. But... They're going to intend now at the 45-yard line. 27 seconds left. Tie game. This time they bring pressure. It's a blitz. And Johnson's down in the arms of Chris Horn. For the first time, they come after Doug Johnson. A perfectly timed blitz by Ellis Johnson. He waited to the right chance. He waited for the opportunity. And he brought two linebackers inside. And nobody's able to pick up Horn. And Doug Johnson can't elude pressure when it comes right up the middle like that. And time expires. The fans boo. Had they been quicker to get over the ball, Florida could have tried a Hail Mary play of some type or another. Hope for a completion or at least a penalty. But Doug Johnson was looking for the sidelines and all honesty, it didn't look like Steve Spurrier was really yeah. certain whether they should try another play or just settle for the result being decided in overtime. So we head to overtime. Still a relatively new phenomenon in college football. Alabama 1-1 one one all time in overtime. Florida 0-1. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Michelle Tafoya back at the swamp, suddenly very silent. Over the years, not only has Florida won virtually every home game under Spurrier, but they've won by an average of 27 right. points, so these fans are not used to even seeing close games. Very quiet on the first snap. Gillespie following the pullback, Rob Roberts, for just a yard to the 24. <laughs> Gillespie now in just nine carries. He's been replaced by Bo Carroll. There's the margin of victory that we mentioned. Now they'll be satisfied with a win of any kind. Johnson throws for Shane Caldwell. Gets a block from Bo Carroll. Marcus Spencer pulls him back at the 19. Four yards, perhaps four and a half, short of a first down. Nice play by Marcus Spencer. We've seen him make a couple big plays here in the fourth quarter. That time he read the middle screen very quickly, got over in position and made a solid tackle on Caldwell for the short game. And he was questionable right up until game time. Had to leave last week's victory over Arkansas with an oblique muscle strain in the abdominal area. Spotted the ball back near the 20, third down and five. First possession for either team in overtime. Johnson throws to Jackson. He has the first down. Pulled down by Kelp Bailey. Just inside the 12-yard line. You got single coverage out here with Bailey. Bailey had a few problems last week against Arkansas. But that's tough for anybody. I don't care how talented you are. You're out there one-on-one -on -one with the big field. Tough to do much better than Bailey did on that play. 303 yards passing now for Johnson on 21 out of 30. John Capel, the motion man. Gillespie up the middle, down to the five-yard line. Second and short upcoming there. Kenny Smith pulled him down. Nice mix of run and pass here on the first possession of overtime for Florida. Nice job by Steve mixing the run and the pass, keeping the defense on their heels a little bit. They haven't had a great amount of success running the football today, but they're creating that indecision on the Alabama defense so far on this drive. Gillespie running right, tries to cut back. Excellent pursuit and penetration by the Alabama front. 
And the play dropped for a loss by Kenny King with help from Jason Jones, the safety. Kenny King pursuing the play, does a nice job keeping it inside of him, staying with the play. Very aggressive inside player. And a big play here. Alabama would love to hold to a field goal try. Third down and four. Out of the gun. Johnson with a lot of time to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Rache Caldwell. Score a touchdown on its possession. Or the game is over for the Florida victory. And the extra point still to come for the Gators. Here's Caldwell in the slot. He's going to run to the corner. It's a timing throw. The safety can't get there in time. Tony Dixon, a bad angle to the football. And a good throw by Johnson. And the extra point is missed. Jeff Chandler, so solid. Since taking over last year as the starting kicker, missed it wide to the right. So Alabama could win the game extra with a touchdown right, no and a successful extra point. You think it's automatic? You think you've got this thing right where you want it? Close, but just wide right. Just the second miss of an extra point by Chandler this year. It won blocked against Central Florida. And if there was any sense on the Alabama sidelines of, of a letdown because they gave up the touchdown, right away they know we got a chance to win it with this possession. Sometimes when something like this happens, you feel like you're destined. Here's the corner route here, and watch the angle taken by Dixon. He's not able to get there in time to make a play on the football, and it's a perfect throw by Doug Johnson. Now Alabama begins its first try of the overtime on offense. Alexander running behind the fullback, the play time. He may go! Touchdown! again with that carry 106 and now they can win it with a Chris Kemp extra point he's the backup kicker Ryan Flugner injured two weeks ago but Kemp's been very steady the last couple of games his kick is no good flag down on the play Florida was offside Sean they're going to get a chance to kick it again it was offside on Florida side of the Florida defense was off sides. They jumped early. They got into the neutral zone and couldn't get back. Benny Alexander and Marquand Manuel on that side. Kemp just pushed it wide right. Wow. They'll have a chance from just a little bit closer. Patrick Morgan is the holder. How narrow do those pipes look right now? That kick is good! today but as you said Todd when they needed a big play from him he made them over and over again and so much of life is about second chances Chris Kemp got one and took advantage of it many would say Mike DuBose got one perhaps he's taking advantage of it he's with Michelle coach it's almost impossible to think of a single question to ask you just your initial thoughts about this win doing it in the swamp uh, this is an outstanding football team we just beat and you first of all you got to give God the credit because God has pulled this football team together he's been with us and you can't say enough good things about these young men to come out and just keep fighting and keep believing and they believe in themselves and they do and it's a team uh, effort they believe in team and they understand each and every one of them's got a role to play and they come out and they played it I couldn't be prouder of them and happier for them 
Coach, I know you're happy, and I know that the excitement is taking over the, the moment, but I have to ask you, is it fair, given the wins that you've... That's you right, baby. <laughs> give God is awesome. I told you he was going to do it. Hey, he's got three plans for us. He God is really awesome. You, you're trying to save the coach right now from a tough question. Coach, is it fair right now, if they make a coaching change, given the advancements you've made in this program and the wins you've had in the last few weeks? I, I don't know. You have to ask, oh. ask somebody else that question. I can't answer that. Uh, you know, we're going to come to work on money, get ready to go uh, and play uh, Ole Miss in two weeks from now. We don't worry about those things. All right, let's send it back up to you, Sean. Thank you, Michelle. And amid rumors swirling that if Alabama lost, Mike Dubose would be out immediately. A big win for Bama that perhaps saves his job. Steve Spurrier leaves this field as a losing head coach for just the third time in 10 years. Alabama wins it in overtime. The final score of the Tide 40, the Gators 39. For Michelle Defoy and Todd Blacklett, Sean McDonough saying so long from Gainesville.